Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to give everyone just about two more minutes to log in and then we'll get started. All right, so it looks like we have most folks joined in now, so let's go ahead and kick it off. First, I'd like to thank you for joining our webinar today, Real-Time Trends, How to Enable a Safe Return to Work with Location Services. I'll be your moderator today. My name is Kim Cowley. And before I introduce our speaker, I just wanted to go over a few. So I'd like to direct your attention to your control panel. If you'd like to switch to phone audio at any time, you can do so by opening the audio pane of your control panel and selecting phone. We'd like for you to submit questions today through the questions pane of your control panel. Please feel free to enter those at any time during the webinar and we'll address them during the Q&A session at the end of the discussion. We'll get to as many of these as we can as time allows. So if we are unable to answer your question today, you can reach out to us at GetHID at hidglobal.com for additional information. We also provided some additional documents in the handout section of your control panel, so please be sure to take a look and download those resources. Also, today's webinar is being recorded and we'll make that available to all of, your, all of the attendees as the webinar concludes. With that, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our speaker for today, Taylor Bryan. Taylor has over 12 years of vertical market experience with real-time location services, smart building technologies, and other mobile communication platforms, focusing on vertical markets such as healthcare and manufacturing. Taylor is supporting HID's end user business team for location services strategy and IoT planning for new and current end users. So thanks so much for presenting on today's topic, Taylor. A safe return to work, and now I'll hand it over to you. Great, thank you, Kim. Uh, thank you everyone for attending today. I'm gonna make sure this is set up correctly, there we go. Um, what I wanted to cover today is uh, the agenda of uh, the topics we'll be covering. Uh, first, we will go over the uh, introduction to HID. Uh, we'll keep this uh, very brief, uh, but talk through the background of HID and, and the value of what we see as RTLS and, and real-time location uh, systems. Uh, we'll cover a little bit of recent research and survey findings. Um, I think this is important to, to touch on because this was uh, a lot done in 2019 and uh, pre the current uh, market environment we are in with the current uh, COVID situation. Uh, we'll cover on new insights and uh, the market trends today. A lot of what we've seen in the last, I would say, uh, 120 uh, days of uh, the pandemic and some of the things that HIV is doing to, to help bring back staff and keep um, folks safe. Uh, we'll cover best practices and in, in the technology overall, the risk and the impact and the ins and outs of different things with RTLS and different technologies. 
Um, and then we'll touch a little bit on other products with HIDs, location services, and um, where we're going as a company. Uh, and, and then we'll round it out with about 15 minutes of Q&A. So um, with that, we'll get, uh, we'll get going here. Um, so HID, as, as most folks are, are familiar with, has been trending in the last couple of years towards uh, uh, secure environments, trusted identities, both in the physical world and in the mobile world. And um, we feel that this technology trend is, is just gonna keep moving forward. And HID wants to uh, stand apart as a leader and looking at adoption of new uh, technologies. Um, the internet of things is all around us, which we probably have at least uh, five to 10 different products in our house today um, that are IoT type products. But where is this leading to and how is this going to help us uh, both in the current market and future market? Um, uh, our vice president managing director of the physical access side with HID um, was one of the first folks to see that HID needs to um, extend that physical access control and, and go into the Internet of Things. And so with that, uh, HID made a, a acquisition several years ago, and um, we have ever since been incorporated into our current technologies and driving forward. Um, I wanted just to touch this real quick because a lot of folks are like, what is a real-time system? What does real-time locating look like? And there's three main components to this. Um, I'll cover this in depth later, but um, you have beacons that communicate to gateways that then uh, create a ton of metadata or analytics. Um, HID has been an API first company for uh, several decades. We continue to be that way. Um, but I think that with the technologies today, we have to start adapting. And uh, the platform today shows that HIT is taking that next step into uh, the digital world. Um, what we'll address here is I like to show something called our ANTS video. Um, what this is, is a great time lapse of an eight hour day. Uh, what we've done is we've given um, over 150 individuals beacons, um, as I showed in that first part, that are uh, transmitting data real time over a day. Uh, you have gateways that then receive this information. Um, all of the data that you're seeing right here, the, the blue dots or the ants as I call it, uh, is anonymous data. Um, there's actually not anything here that can be um, traced upon or if um, hacked, unfortunately. There's no information that gets out. Uh, the information in the HID system is meant to stay anonymous, um, but it's meant to give you vital information of how a building's being used and locate assets, locate uh, personnel, and in our, in our current market, contact tracing, um, automating contact tracing. Um, so I like to show this just to give an idea of what are we talking about today? What is a real time location system? Uh, for the last 15, almost 20 years, it's been uh, too expensive. It's been out of the reach of most corporate America. Um, actually about 80%, 90% of the RTLS has been in the healthcare market. Um, so I wanted to show this video just to give us kind of a starting point. So with that, um, many on this call and many um, in, in the IT field and even facilities and security field have been getting into the digital age. Uh, Gartner um, has been a market and trusted advisor for uh, many, many years. Uh, as you can see, 15,000 different enterprises trust in it, 100 countries. But Gartner put out a indoor location services report uh, in 2020. And as you can see in the market leaders column, uh, HID Global is, is a part of it. Um, I, I want to focus on this because given a pandemic, uh, there's a lot of folks taking advantage of a, a dire situation. Um, HID sees that we needed to come to the market and, and talk to uh, where ta technologies are going because um, I think budgets are tight, companies are struggling to get by and investing one time, not many times, is, is right now what we're trying to achieve. And the companies that are listed in this, in this box over here from Gartner um, are very senior and senior companies. You have companies like Cisco, uh, Aruba, uh, Juniper, Zebra. Um, these are companies that have been around for decades, have been working in location services for decades, and they're proven and reliable. Um, there's over 60 different 
uh, technologies, I would say, that have probably come to market in the last 90 days. And sometimes you don't know if that company is going to be around in the next year, 12 months, 24 months. So uh, we're seeing a great adoption. We're seeing great growth in this space. Um, I think Gartner has put out a great report that we're happy to share um, after this uh, as, as supporting documentation. Uh, but the market's growing. So what is RTLS? What is a real-time location system? We all use it today. Uh, GPS, Waze, Google Maps, Apple Maps, you're using location data. Um, as we get into indoor or more accurate systems, you have a lot of different technologies. Ultra wideband uh, is starting to come to market, still pretty early, very expensive. Uh, Wi-Fi has been around for, again, another decade. Um, it's coming down a little bit in price, but a Wi-Fi enterprise system is very expensive still. Uh, RFID, we see RFID every day when we're going to uh, a clothing store and there's a tag on something, or in an electronics store, there's a tag on it. So security around RFID or passive systems. Um, all of, of all these technologies, um, we feel BLE currently is, is really the market leader. It is uh, low energy. It provides a low cost and operational cost for a product, but it provides a level of accuracy that gives you um, everything you need for the value. Um, HID uh, made, made the acquisition with, the, uh, with this company to incorporate it in. Um, not saying this is the last or the, or the future, but for the next five years, we see BLE is really taking off and really creating a... Uh, a new market and, and creating new ways to use location services that, again, once uh, in the past was not available to others, uh, nor affordable. So why indoor location services? Um, I actually created this deck uh, back in 2019, and I added in uh, uh, the COVID situation on the bottom left, but um, today there's already been solutions that can provide contact tracing. Contact tracing is nothing more than really time and attendance in a given area, providing the known or unknown for an amount of time. Um, occupancy optimization, utilization of buildings and facilities. Um, this is now affordable to, to the current market. Um, contact tracing automates that. Uh, we can now provide uh, the, the COVID contact tracing as a part of an overall solution to create a better ROI. Uh, put your capital in the right place. Uh, wayfinding is something that everyone's very familiar with. As you walk through uh, buildings or um, going through airports, um, occupancy experience is going to grow. Companies like WeWork and other um, real estate companies have been using it for hoteling or hot desking. Um, the need for smart buildings is ever changing. It's it's uh, it's ever growing. And when you look at RTLS, the, the idea is not to look at a single use case, but to look at as many use cases as you possibly can to create a platform, not a single point solution. Um, some of the other efficiencies, obviously, are operational efficiencies. Um, how long does it take people in manufacturing lines or in clean room environments? Um, condition monitoring is, is another massive ROI. Um, for motion, temperature, uh, predicting product failures, um, HVAC monitoring. Um, I put at the bottom some other use cases, but a lot of these provide a, a positive environmental impact um, and, and truly carbon reduction. So let's talk to some of the research before I jump into, into the coming back to work. Um, and I promise I'll hit it uh, very quickly. But a lot of this research was done pre-pandemic. Um, obviously, it's going to change. But we look now to how does real-time location employees and visitors matter? How do you know how many people are in your building or go through the turnstiles? Um, how is visitor management being monitored? HID has a visitor management platform, Easy Lobby. Um, we have seen record numbers of growth because industries, healthcare, and non are trying to determine what is the true uh, number of people in your facility? Um, where did they go? Who did they interact with? Um, unfortunately, and, and I've, I've seen this, but um, I have a bad memory sometimes. I don't remember everything I touched in a day, everywhere I went to. So knowing number and location of who's there, who's around you is very important. 
Um, when I saw this number last year, it was pretty surprising. 45% as a security company, 45% do not know number or location in a building. That's significant. Um, some of the other items, uh, emergency response protocols. I, I thought this was actually kind of interesting when we when we provided the survey because um, of all the 500 plus end users that took the survey, uh, health was actually uh, a protocol on here. Um, and now given the current circumstances, um, in 2017, it was at 62% were planning for a health emergency or protocol. Um, and it was only at 53% heading into later in 2019. Whereas active shooter, you can see went from 53 to 62%. Um, there are other things that are still taking priority that you still have to think about, even when you bring people back to work. Uh, fire, natural disasters. Um, there's a lot of things that we just don't know. We can't plan for. Um, so information about your building is very important. And then um, I, do you know when you have employees um, in restricted areas? Um, I kind of chuckle at this because in, in, in uh, my years of, of working in sales and engineering, I have found myself in probably areas I shouldn't have been in just because I'm trying to find the bathroom. Or I'm walking down a hallway and I open a door and I'm now in a secure environment. Uh, working in healthcare for many years, I'd be in biotech. But really knowing who's in the restricted area. Should they be there? Should they not be there? So these are the type of questions that, that we really start asking. Um, again, pre-pandemic, pre but this research was important. And I think it gives an idea of how RTLS can help. Um, so then you gain efficiency. Um, one of the ones I like most is actually visibility into your, your utilization. Um, I'll show a, a slide later that we received actually from Gartner, but there's a lot of employees, a lot in the tech world actually have already announced no one's coming back to war till 2021. Um, I'm, I live in, and based in Texas. Um, we're about to go into another lockdown. Uh, California has already gone back into a semi lockdown. So how are these buildings going to be operated? Um, real estate and the efficiency of your building now come to mind. Um, how can you automate and your, make your buildings more efficient, um, especially when you may not have as many employees coming back to work? So we're jumping quickly through, but I think that it's, it's, it's important to, um, to get to what most people are looking at for today. Um, what are the market trends? Um, this was actually a report that, that Gartner um, put out in April. And I thought it was it was interesting to see uh, the numbers. And it was the percentage of your workforce that you're looking to remain uh, remote uh, post COVID. You know, who's not going to be coming back anymore? Um, the number that stood out was this one right here in the middle at 20% uh, uh, will remain remote out of 20 businesses. So out of every one out of five, um, I'm going to have employees that aren't coming back. 10% uh, will remain remote. Um, a lot of companies are actually having shifts coming back one week and then not coming back other weeks. Um, this is actually, it, it's interesting because it's hard to work from home. Uh, a lot of us have family. A lot of us have kids running around and have other tasks. So how are we going to evolve moving forward this year and next year? Um, when you make this type of investment, you have to look at multiple different components um, and really look at what is what is the ROI, what, what is going to benefit your organization in the long term. Um, so coming back to work, um, this this one was an interesting slide that we uh, were able to pull from on uh, uh, from PwC PricewaterCooper in May. And as we go through this, uh, HID internally has been looking at a lot of these different uh, employee health and safety checks. Um, probably the one thing that's been the most predominant, you see it everywhere on all type of marketing and sales um, uh, websites, has been about temperature monitoring um, and creating physical distancing and social distancing. And how are you using this mesh of different things to be able to open your offices? Um, well, I can say personally, knowing that uh, both my grandparents actually came down with COVID and, and are recovering. But my grandfather, who actually went into the hospital, never ran a temperature. 
never ran a high temperature, was never above 99 degrees. So thermal cameras are only part of the solution. Um, providing a, a safe environment is really about reducing exposure, but then being able to know 100% immediately who could have been exposed and then accelerating that information. Um, and then there's other benefits to, to having this. So I'm um, happy to share this, but uh, th I thought these were some great talking points. So what else are we hearing? Uh, we talked about the changing environment, um, emerging threats, um, you know, the risk in your office. Uh, I, I showed the architecture earlier about uh, dress beacons, but uh, feeling safe, uh, working late hours, um, implementing touchless solutions. Uh, well, I'll touch on this a little, a little later, but uh, many that are familiar with HID are, are familiar with HID's mobile access, uh, using a smartphone to be able to uh, provide the right credentials to unlock doors remotely. Um, and then this now ties into minimizing isolation, you know, able to allow us to get into, um, you know, the office quietly, not having alerts going off, um, but being able to allow us to keep working and be effective and be productive. Um, reducing anxiety. Um, I do have a father who's um, in his late 60s, um, very scared about, about the current environment. Uh, when I would leave the house, uh, when I was traveling or going places, um, asking, you know, hey, what are you doing? You know, protecting those around you. Um, that helps when you know that your company is doing all the things it can to ensure safety. Um, the next part of that would be identifying lone workers. As you send people back, I, I can think of a tech company that we were talking to earlier this week, who uh, he was the only person in the building, head of global operations, um, but he's working late, um, or she may be working late, and being able to know that your uh, facility is protected. So we were talking about RTLS, and I showed the Gartner report earlier. Um, all of these markets and all of these industries have different drivers. There, there's a few similarities though across all of them. Workforce safety, student safety, um, mustering, um, time and attendance, and visitor location. These are all synonymous across all the different vertical markets. Um, I, I tout the compelling event because what is the reason for this purchase? Typically you're thinking just one need. Um, and every presentation HID has that, that I've been involved in, uh, the number one need today is contact tracing. Um, or social distancing. When I ask the question of what's next, that sometimes never has been brought up. Um, but in a solution like this, you do need to look at, you're buying a platform. You're buying something that can not just solve one need, but dozens of different needs and create that ROI. So when you look at different vendors, when you look at different technologies, think about that. Um, what's gonna help you reduce risk? What's gonna help you save money? Um, the last 10 years, healthcare was the only vertical market that could afford an RTLS system. Uh, with what HID has done, our, our goal is to drop the prices almost 50% to make it affordable to financial services, commercial real estate, uh, biotech companies, and education. As, as everyone's seen, schools are going to open eventually. Uh, how do you protect the students? How do you protect um, the teachers and administration? So some best practices, what, what, are we, what are we focusing on? Um, one, contact tracing. Uh, and that's not to be confused with physical distancing. Contact tracing is documenting um, who came in contact for a certain amount of time in a certain area with someone else. Um, physical distancing, which we are actually creating a, a solution for, um, hopefully it will be out later this year, but it goes hand in hand with contact tracing. Contact tracing is documenting and providing um, who is there. It's, the value is, is really providing the automation to that zonal alert. The physical distancing is I passed X. Uh, Tim and Tammy passed each other in the hallway. Well, we're both wearing masks. Do we need to send home Tim because he passed Tammy for five seconds, 10 seconds? Uh, did they have a conversation? How did they interact? Um, I like to always refer to the five whys. Why are we sending them home? Oh, because they passed each other. Well, were, were they really having that conversation? 
Uh, smart, smartphone augmentation is something that we're heavily invested in and looking towards. Um, but today it's just mobile apps communicating. Um, so really when you're trying to look at a safe application, you need to look at multiple components of who, how long, and why. What, why, what were they doing? Um, did that mean sending them home? So those protocols are something that HR needs to get involved in. Um, but all of this is providing um, information to minimize that fear, uh, and to let your employees know that, look, we're not here to track you. We want to have anonymous data so that if your colleague is sick, um, we're not one, gonna send you home for no reason, but two, we do need to be able to notify you if something happens. Um, it's no more obtrusive than your cell phone today hitting a cell tower. If the government wants to find you, they will. Um, restore productivity. Um, I think for most companies, most businesses, we gotta get back to work. We have to be able to provide a fluid situation of getting back to work quickly, and identifying those that were sick. Um, enforcing the new normal. Um, I'm not a, a fortune teller, but I'm, a, I'm gonna guess for the next 12 months, for the next year and a half, we're gonna be affected by this. Uh, but providing a digital trail of interactions is very important. Automate these systems. Um, hiring employees can be expensive to do just contact tracing. A lot of times it's HR taking the load. Um, technologies like this help spread out the, the need and help you provide uh, compliance to federal and local laws, as well as opening your businesses. So uh, this is a nice little uh, before and after, but everyone remembers the old Mario and the new. Um, RFID and asset tracking was, was the, the, the past. Uh, even solutions today that you're seeing for just basic physical distancing, they're not a true uh, enterprise data service. They are not providing multiple different use cases, mul multiple different analytics. Um, it's a point solution. Um, so we like to show that in the past, you could do just basic custom built, you know, homegrown systems, but a lot of times you leave things out. So responding quickly and having a enterprise company like HID support you um, is, is really what we're focusing on. Um, so contact tracing, responding quickly. Um, I like to just show this. I'm not gonna talk to it long, but um, who's the source employee? How are you initiating that they were identified? Um, I've had several colleges say, we're gonna use apps. We think our students are gonna be able to report. I, I don't speak for other students, but I think that being in college once, if I got sick, I wasn't documenting I was sick and letting everyone in the university know. Um, you have HIPAA guidelines you have to follow which are healthcare guidelines set by the government. So being able to find that source information, run a contact tracing report with HR in, in your facility, and then provide real-time analytics within several hours rather than days. Um, several companies we've spoken to, it takes a week to do a full contact trace analysis, one week. Um, how many other people were infected? And then using this information to move forward and, and tie into your network. So. Um, we're not using anything that's not used to IT today, it can be deployed very quickly. Um, and I think that field triage in areas, making it easy to deploy is very important. Um, we did talk about the uh, physical distancing. Uh, there is a solution that HID is working on to provide um, close peer-to-peer -peer physical distancing. So that two meters, that's six feet. Um, it will be Bluetooth enabled. It will work on the same platform and architecture that the contact tracing and all of the other solutions earlier we discussed work on. Um, but again, at a cost effective uh, means, uh, it's not just one solution, it's many. Uh, but this will help you monitor movement and reducing large uh, congregations. Um, I always give the example when I'm presenting this of you see 10 people head to the elevator they're not gonna be social distancing. It's just a fact. Um, so how do you document that? How do you create a disturbance for that? Uh, in manufacturing plants, you're gonna have people that are all constantly working together and passing each other. Um, so the proximity and physical distancing is a, is a factor, but it, it, it may work in manufacturing where it's not gonna work in your administrative building where you gotta keep noise down and you don't want to be loud. Um, this is a great, uh, 
uh, I like to say flow chart of what we've tried and what, what companies are seeing. Um, at first it was two phones communicating. Uh, standard coverage was uh, Google and Apple. What you miss is that a six to 10 foot range is me standing on one side of, an, of, of another uh, from a wall. A wall's only four inches thick. So I could have someone that's five feet away on one side of the wall and I'm five feet away on the other side of the wall. And it's gonna say that I came in contact with someone. Um, it's not very accurate. And the same goes with um, all the other one, two and three down, down below. But that proximity and the reliable data is very important. Um, HID wants to be a part of all of it. We are creating uh, an app that can provide location information. We are providing apps that communicate to beacons. Um, we have beacons that communicate with other beacons. So our goal is to provide, again, a platform of multiple solutions that fit your need. Um, and I think that when you look at who's out there providing solutions, um, you got to think the long term. So we're talking more about contact tracing, but I like to show visuals. Um, so an employee coming in contact with another employee, uh, we have gateways that communicate that information, provide that data back to a cloud, and then created contact tracing report. Um, it's real-time data. Yeah, you have it as soon as it happens. Um, so this information becomes important when you're looking at deploying into an environment such as an office building. Um, segregating zones. Uh, in this current picture here, you could have three or four different zones. Um, when identifying vendors and looking at different solutions, you got to ask yourself, um, what areas are we protecting and, and how do people congregate? How do people move? Uh, you're really doing space utilization when you start looking at this. Um, I feel that in the next couple months, we'll see a lot of these offices shrink down to half um, you're not using those spaces, but providing heat maps also provides a contact trace. Um, so these are just more examples of what you could be looking for with a real-time location system. Um, this is a, an example of a, a floor paint of one of our clients. Um, the blue boxes show zones of interaction uh, where they wanted to put occupancy limits. Uh, when too many people are in a conference room, send an alert. When too many people are in a lobby, send an alert. Um, but where do those alerts go? How do we identify the occupancy? How do we understand how many people were there? Uh, this is also a great test bank for uh, running a pilot. Um, I 100% stand by pilots. Um, one, it gives you a way to operationally test a product before buying it and seeing how it can integrate. Get, you know, testing it, you know, everyone kind of test drives a car before you buy it. Um, you date people before you get engaged. Um, there are ways to try things out to see if it works. Um, this is a great example of that. This is just a floor layout to say, this is how we want to monitor our occupancy and see how coming back to work can get, uh, can be proven and what needs to change as we bring back more employees. Um, so HID has, uh, has, has jumped into the pool for creating a dashboard. Um, we actually are creating this because of contact tracing. Uh, we, we held out for a while, um, but we decided we needed just a basic uh, uh, monitoring occupancy type product. And so we'll be delivering this sometime in uh, Q3 for uh, zone alerting and identifying occupancy of different zones. Uh, people on different floors. So um, a tool that can be used to help enable your growth. Um, you may not know what you want to use uh, globally or nationally. Um, so the HID dashboard will help you get there. Um, we have a lot of different ways we can address this and, and integrate, but um, it's kind of your first step. And what you want is the, the beacon contact summary. Um, how you came in contact and how long you came in contact with someone. So the begin and the end. Um, basic reporting and analytics of tracing. Uh, mustering has been actually pre-pandemic, uh, about 80% of our um, uh, use cases were around mustering and emergency management, visitor management. So we'll be providing that in this functionality as well. But we've also had other partners, um, again, API for strategy. Uh, one partner we've been working with in the healthcare space that has uh, 
hundred years ba uh, of experience between all of their employees. Uh, it's a company called Zulafly. Uh, before we had a dashboard, we uh, relied heavily on the Zulafly product, but um, they do a lot more integration into temperature monitoring and quality lab environment, workflow, rounding, uh, long-term care facilities. Um, everyone in the last, I would say 90 days has really focused on long-term care because um, we got to protect our, our citizens and who's coming into the sites. Where did they go? Who did they interact with? Uh, dress alerts. Uh, so Zulafly is a, is a great partner uh, from an HID standpoint, great software company that we've worked with. Um, another company is Genetech. Um, Genetech is one of the world leaders in, in video monitoring surveillance. Um, we've been working with Genetech um, on three or four continents now with providing an RTLS uh, capability, uh, providing proximity and locating uh, for different individuals and then tying that to their camera systems. Um, how many people are congregating? Where are, are they congregating? And then providing your security managers with visuals real time. Um, so different than, than Azula Fly. You may have uh, sites where you have three or four different dashboards, um, but security obviously needs this type of, of uh, dashboard, needs this type of integration. So i um, like to show the different visuals here. The one on the top right is, is a uh, looking for someone. Uh, Jitatech was actually one of the first partners before the pandemic uh, for uh, uh, duress. Uh, man down situations in, in uh, industrial areas or in mental health. Um, so they too have jumped on and, and are seeing the value in a real-time locating system providing useful information to your facility. So in review, um, kind of covered a lot and I'm, I'm definitely flying through this, but um, HID is really trying to uh, provide all the different use cases for returning to work. Uh, we, we discussed the contact tracing, uh, physical distancing, smartphones, um, but planning for the future, um, creating savings, creating future workflows and use cases. Um, do not just pick an expensive solution. Uh, find something of value, pilot it, test it. Um, there's a lot of technologies out there and we hope HID can, can be part of uh, your next projects moving forward. Um, and then from a project architecture standpoint, as I mentioned, um, there's, there's a lot of ways to do this. We have partnerships that we are working on with uh, companies like um, Aruba and uh, Juniper Mist, who have BLE gateways um, to help us augment what they're doing and, and provide location services. Um, some new products that we're coming out with in the bottom uh, left is the Soft Beacon. Uh, we are looking at what we call identity positioning. Um, identifying real time uh, where folks are um, using um, employee owned devices. There's over a million plus mobile devices in the healthcare market today. Industrial markets are using employee owned or employer owned devices. So cre creating a soft beacon, um, a text beacon, which means oil gas explosion proof. So these beacons communicating via Bluetooth. Um, price points range from $50 MSRP down to $23 MSRP, so affordable. Three-year life expectancy. Um, you got to look at this as not just an investment for one scenario, but for three years. How are you going to use this? How would this provide value? You're making the capital purchase. Would you just throw it away year two? Would you just throw it in the trash year three? No, you want to look at the value and get the value out of your solution. Uh, there's a lot of ways to design it. Uh, the blue fies uh, down here in the, the center, uh, two different options. One's a DC, one's an AC. A uh, lot of different ways to use this based on your environment. And then backhauling that information via the Wi-Fi. Um, the example I would give is a large healthcare client of ours has 10,000 beacons deployed. And um, they're using as much data as five people streaming Netflix. So um, it doesn't crash your network. Um, it is secured by the IT departments. Um, but then what do you do with the data? Uh, we create a ton of metadata that can be used in a lot of different ways. Um, so architecturally, uh, very simple. It's one, two, three. Um, you find the area that you're looking to deploy. You find the use case 
whether it's tracking or locating assets, uh, providing duress functionality or man down, um, soft beacon on the phone, which is, is something that HID is working on, um, or ATEX in industrial areas. Um, you can use it in a lot of different ways from a design standpoint. Are you right here? Are you near here? Um, creating geofences and poly policy violations comes in the software. Um, so this is just more diving into how are you going to use it? How is your environment uh, being managed? Um, no, no office building, no deployment that we've ever deployed has ever been the same. Uh, every HR, every company operates differently. And so we want to work with you and be flexible in doing that too. Um, just some last minute kind of touches, but safeguarding your well being using the dress beacons. Um, we've tied this into other solutions. Uh, one being our Easy Lobby product. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, visitor management has been um, almost 400% increase in the last three months. Um, a lot of folks in another survey, we have 50% of end users still use a paper roster. Um, they use paper for contact tracing, uh, very remedial tasks, um, especially when you're hiring people to do this. So automating your system, creating an, uh, an integration with Easy Lobby was really a, a simple move for us. Um, and then the next step I would say is, is moving to mobile. Um, HID has, has definitely put this into the foreground of, of value to our clients. Um, I think that location services is gonna add into this, but being able to uh, switch out the card or add a mobile device to your current uh, HID card um, is really the next step to seamless access. Um, providing value when you're walking to the door, not having to use a card all the time. Um, a card goes missing for two or three days, a phone, I lose it for five minutes and I start searching for it. So um, I think we've seen how mobile devices are changing our lives already today. And uh, I think with location services, it will, it will do the same. Um, I touched on the Easy Lobby earlier, but this is a, a more of a, a detailed design. Um, assigning beacons um, to your customers uh, as they come in. So really being able to provide physical escorts and video monitoring as it's tied to the RTLS system. Um, so thinking bigger picture, it's more than just contact tracing. It's a complete ecosystem of how you use your environment. Um, I'm gonna wrap up here with some, with some case studies. Um, we, we've deployed this in a lot of different locations. This is one of our partners in um, the UK but they decided um, and worked with a large bank to provide uh, occupancy data. This is all pre-pandemic. Uh, pre uh, this was in 2018, 2019, but safety and compliance and for utilization. Um, as I mentioned, the product is now affordable. Um, for the first time really in, in the history of RTLS, you're not having to break the bank um, and the value you get out of it is tenfold. Um, knowing who and where employees are uh, it is important this time of day. So uh, we have a few financial customers that have, have moved this place. Uh, commercial real estate has also been a, a, a big topic um, because you're managing thousands of properties around the world. You have clients coming in. So um, I, I like to touch on evacuation management and crisis management, um, knowing who's in your building. Uh, one of our largest deployments is actually in the industrial side. Uh, down in, in Houston at a chemical plant. Um, but reducing risk has always been an ongoing theme. Um, I think today it just means more than what it used to. And lastly, long-term care. Um, we've actually deployed and are deploying with a, a partner of ours in uh, Australia uh, called Essence. Uh, they've actually really taken hold of the long-term care space and uh, have been looking at how can they provide a better level of care. Uh, did your staff take care of your family member when they needed their medication? Um, as I mentioned, my grandparents earlier, my grandmother has uh, dementia. She needs her medication every day at a given time. So was that staff member in that area? Did they go give that medication when they needed to? Um, so I hope this was uh, a good overview of the uh, coming back to work and, and the trends we're seeing in the marketplace. 
Uh, we feel RTLS can be um, a, a big part of this and um, HID is looking to, uh, to help as we move forward. So I think with that said, um, we'll be able to, to jump into questions. And the questions are on the right pane of the screen. And Kim, I'm trying to pull these up real quick. Let's see here. Um, so one of the uh, questions that we are receiving, I'll start going through these as, as we go. Um, so which department is the core buyer when you're selling RTLS in the end user organization? Is it operation, safety, security, uh, or IT? And does it vary by industry? Um, I think that every department has a value add to, to a solution like this. Um, when we go in and we work, typically we start in security. Uh, protecting your perimeter normally is the, is the first step. Security and operations are also in charge of safety. So typically uh, facility management and uh, your security departments are typically where HID has the relationship. We've been in the market for 30 years providing safety security. Um, but then you then you start transcending the the uh, organization. You then get IT is always the next stop. Um, IT is great because they always have looked at solutions like this, but never could afford it. Um, end user applications typically comes in from large organizations um, to create those workflows. So then IT gets involved, security gets involved. Um, but yes, by industry it definitely varies. Um, I, I can't say that there's any one um, department that makes that buying decision. And a lot of times the departments aren't on the same page, as we all know, internal politics can uh, get in the way and, and can definitely uh, cause issues. So uh, we work at trying to solve a value to every department um, that, that is needed. And uh, the pilot normally does that. It exposes that there's a technology being used and others say, hey, I wanna use this. Hey, I have a use case for this. Um, so thank you, Derek. That's that's definitely uh, one that, that that comes up quite often. Uh, jump to the next one here. Um, how many beacons are needed for a three-story building? Um, battery life and maintenance. Do I need an app? So actually, when you deploy the product, um, we are using an app. Uh, we do use an app to provision the equipment or we provision it um, in, in the warehouse so that when you get on site, you can just plug it in and go. Um, but deploying a three-story building depends on one square footage. Um, a typical DC blue fi covers about a thousand square feet for six to 10 foot accuracy. And I'll say six to 10 foot accuracy because um, the beacons transmit data. So you wanna preserve the live to get that three-year live. So about five seconds, um, you're, you're, you're sending a signal that is then being picked up by a gateway. Those gateways are deployed based on the accuracy you're looking for. If you're just looking for straight floor level, um, I need to know that Bill, Todd, and Mary are on the third floor, that now they're on the second floor, now they're on the first floor, um, you don't need as much equipment. If you wanna know what rooms they are in on those floors, then you're gonna need more. So um, there's a calculator that we can use to help with budgets and, and definitely contact your um, your local uh, HID provider or, or partner, and they, they can help with that. Um, and then battery life and uh, maintenance. So battery life, uh, again, it's a variation based on transmission. Um, if you want it to chirp every one second, so you'll see some solutions that talk about social distancing. Uh, our social distancing beacons that we're that we're uh, going to be launching um, in a few in a few weeks um, will have a replaceable battery. Now we tend to stay away from replaceable battery because um, there's actually a time that um, you know affects how long it is. If it's going to beep every one second to two seconds, then you need to change it. But in healthcare, for 
a year, do you want to have to change your battery out? It's a huge cost. So that's why social distancing, even though it's a great idea to say, hey, stay away six feet, um, that contact tracing component or that zone component is actually a better approach. You get a longer life expectancy and we're all adults. Um, we, we can now also be babysat if we need to with cameras and different integrations, but um, that battery life is meant to be three years, so five seconds. Um, obviously we can change that, but the idea is to reduce your maintenance, reduce your operating costs, um, so they're not you're having to go back and forth. Um, how do you position your own dashboards against partners' dashboards? Aren't you now competing against your partners? Um, we're not competing against our partners. Uh, the HID pack channel is 100% focused on our partners and supporting our channel. Um, as I mentioned with Zulify, with, uh, with Genetech, uh, with uh, companies in the UK, ACS, TDS in, in Ireland, Essence in Australia, uh, we have partners all around the world. Um, we created a dashboard just to get past, uh, I would say, the, uh, the 50 yard line. Uh, once you get down to that 20 yard line, um, I'm using a football analogy, obviously, um, you're going to want more integrations and HID is not going to be there. Uh, we're just helping with a uh, initial pilot, initial one year, maybe get your feet wet, uh, figure out how you want to use the system uh, and get analytics. And then from there, you're going to want to upgrade. You're going to want to look at more diversified workflows. Um, one thing that we, we saw with Genetech was that we had a kind of phase one. Um, and then immediately, as soon as, as soon as their clients started seeing the solution, a hundred questions get thrown at you. Can you integrate to this? Can you integrate to that? Um, we have 200 APIs that we are putting out there for multiple dashboards. You, in healthcare specifically, because it's the most complex, you can have seven different uh, uh, dashboards. You could have transport, you could have security, uh, rounding and physician management integrating into Epic or uh, CERN or EMR systems. So I think that um, our goal is just to help get the product launched out to give clients the, the art of possible. And I think that word is cheesy, but uh, the art of possible. Uh, there's so much that is possible with this solution. Uh, can the mobile phone be used as Beacon today, uh, specifically using the HID mobile app? Uh, not today. Uh, that is one of our R&D projects that we're working on. Um, unfortunately, as we were beginning to get into the, the meat of the mobile device, the mobile beacon, which we do feel will be a very uh, strong product um, to coincide with our mobile access product. Um, so as soon as the pandemic kicked up, it was right as we were, we were getting ready to develop and so unfortunately, we've, uh, we're definitely be behind by several months on getting the mobile or soft beacon deployed. Um, but yes, the, the Arigo platform and the mobile access component is a big piece of where we're going. And um, as I mentioned, there's well over a million, I know, iPhone devices in, in North America. Uh, I think the last report I had is over 4 million devices around the world that are owned by their employers. Um, well, why wouldn't you want those phones to be able to open your doors and provide RTLS and provide useful data to make your operations more efficient. Um, can the BLEs be daisy chained? Uh, what's the medium used for power? Can it be power used in the network? Um, so today the, the AC version can be plugged into a once an outlet. The DC version can be daisy chained. They have a USB plug on them that can actually be um, uh, tied to a power over ethernet adapter. Um, we are working on a power over Ethernet uh, gateway. Um, we have experienced tons and tons of locations where um, you, you don't have great Wi-Fi and it gets very expensive. We're partnering with a lot of the cellular providers to provide cellular hotspots so that the hotspots provide the Wi-Fi for the gateways and then back call the information uh, via the cellular connection. Um, the P over E will provide us a way to do that without having to use uh, the on-prem Wi-Fi. Um, but yes, we can daisy chain today. Um, they just need five volts of power. So we can definitely work with you on those power requirements um, and take advantage of, of that. Um, is the PowerPoint presentation available? I'd have to check with Kim on that, on, on the whole presentation. I know that uh, certain parts of it definitely can be made available. Um, as needed. 
Um, can you explain the contact tracing and how it works with keeping people anonymous? Um, at some point, you have to know who these people are. Um, I think that's the big catch-22. Everyone wants to be anonymous until you need to know that someone was sick. Um, so when you look at keeping that anonymous, uh, it comes down to keeping it to your, um, your HR or your security managers. Uh, today, everyone already has your information. Uh, HR already has that data. So you can provide logins so that the data is anonymous to those folks that are logging in. They don't see who it is. Um, but then if something important does happen, then you can start locating people uh, and work with your HR to do that. So um, contact tracing can work in a lot of different ways. Some sites are doing it daily and then just uh, documenting that or saving that information, um, handing out beacons by day and then washing them at night as shifts come in. So, so bringing in shift employees and handing out those beacons. You still have to be able to know who had that beacon on that day to be successful at contact tracing though. Um, if you have an older HID system, can the system be integrated? Uh, unfortunately, this is not um, integrated to the HID access control system. Uh, the beacons actually can be uh, pressed together with older HID beacons. Um, but the beacons for location services do have batteries in them. You cannot print on them. Um, that, that is not a, a good thing to do. So the uh, card holder or the adhesive beacons are the other two options. So you can keep your HID current card um, and tie it into the new RTLS system. Uh, and we have ways to do that. That way you can keep your older system. Um, with mobile access though and things, and with the new Signo uh, product line, I think that um, you may want to look at you know, what is that five-year plan for, for upgrading your system? Uh, do you see an educational market application tracking students? Um, yes. Um, I know when I was in college, was, which wasn't that long ago, we, part of our uh, syllabus and buying books, we had to buy a clicker that you pushed when the teacher said, hey, I'm taking attendance. Um, that was $20. That was almost 15 years ago. 16 years ago. Um, so we had a clicker that said, hey, I am in class. Um, this isn't a large lecture hall in a college. What's any different than handing your students a $23 beacon that now allows them to do all your classes, um, all the different departments, whether it be your uh, business department, your engineering department. So I definitely see a huge application. I think that mobile will also be a big component of that. Um, Universities like Clemson and MIT have been looking at mobile for a long time. Clemson went full mobile with their mobile phone. So I definitely see a value there. Um, your site mentions Google's Eddystone, but it looks like Google isn't developing that any longer. Do you know what Google is doing? Um, so when you look at Bluetooth and you turn on your phone, your iPhone uses iBeacon. It's an open protocol. Um, if I put an app on my phone, I could actually look at your phone and, and hack your phone if I know what I'm doing. So iBeacon and Google's Eddystone, so Android, um, are open protocols. We can put Eddystone and iBeacon on our beacons. Um, HID uses our own uh, S Beacon protocol, secure beacon. It's encrypted. Uh, we also have our own data packeting for accuracy. So in healthcare and industrial settings where there's tons of Bluetooth noise, um, we don't conflict with those different signals. Uh, that's definitely getting into the weeds of this, but um, accuracy is key. Uh, BLE in general, some people say, oh, it's just not that accurate. They're using iBeacon or they're using Eddystone. Um, we've, we've definitely practiced and created a way to make it uh, more accurate. I'm not sure what Google's doing with Eddystone. I would say probably 75% of the market's using iBeacon. Um, when we do run into BLE systems, um, but they're just not as accurate. You definitely get a, a loss there. Uh, can this be applied to school buses when a student gets on and off real time? Um, we've tested putting gateways, so the gateways provide that BLE signal. Um, no one's ever really moved forward with it for knowing if students get on or off because um, buses travel and are limited to traffic. And sometimes you have stops and sometimes you don't have stops. So really it comes down to a time and attendance system. Uh, we have seen industrial companies do this though in a different scenario, not for school buses, but for 
equipment. Um, I'm going to have to run out of time here. Um, definitely several more, more questions coming in. Um, so what I can do is, um, let's see, Kim, are you there? I am here. <laughs> A lot more questions on here. Um, but I can, I can answer these later or yes absolutely we'll do our best to get to each and every one of these questions again if there's anything else that you'd like to know you can always reach out to get hid at hidglobal.com so for now knowing that we're at time we'll say thank you taylor for a very informative insightful presentation and thank you all again for joining us and we hope that you'll join us again soon for future webinars have a great day thank you all